All right, Wayne Bettis here, the founder of the Off The Tools podcast. I just want to introduce you to our brand new sponsor, directplumbingsupplies.com. It is founded by a former tradesman who has set up his own plumbing and heating merchants. He has an online shop, which is obviously at directplumbingsupplies.com, and he delivers across the UK. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the rest of the show. You are now listening to Off The Tools with the one and only Wayne Bettis. If you're passionate and driven and focused in what you do, people will take notice. You you can achieve anything you want to achieve. The excuses are not valid. Well, welcome to the next episode of the Off The Tools podcast. Today, I have a fantastic guest, um, someone that I've not had this this industry on the show before from health and fitness, uh, which is like a real fundamental part of everyone's life, but more importantly, business owners' life, because we have to make shit happen and, and produce day out, day in, day out. So let me introduce you, Gavin Denning. Welcome to the uh, podcast. Great to be here, mate. Thanks for having yeah. me on. No worries at all. I've been meaning to get you on for, for like since I started the show, but you know how it goes. Life just gets in the way. Uh, but we finally finally sat down and chatting. So just could you just like introduce yourself? Let let the let the listeners know a bit about who you are, where you've come from, and and what you're doing. Right. So my name is obviously Gavin Denning, as Wayne said. Uh, I'm the owner of GWD Performance. So we are a Bedfordshire based gym, uh, specialising. I guess helping people lose body fat, be healthy. Uh, we work with a lot of business owners. Um, as Wayne said, obviously very important to look after you, yourself if you've got a business. That's now led us on to work in, in the corporate wellness world as well. And we work with a lot of construction companies. Um, the biggest company we work with is Taylor Wimpy. Um, so that's going well. Obviously, we're navigating through the COVID madness at the minute. But um, yeah, uh, I've known Wayne probably... I don't know what ten years maybe. Yeah, yeah, it must be, mustn't it? Yeah. From from a similar area, Dunstable, Houghton Regis Way. So I have been in this industry now for just over ten years. I actually used to work in construction, uh, so a lot of my family all work in construction. My dad's a painter and decorator, so I dabbled at that for a little bit. Uh, <laughs> couldn't work with my dad, like a lot of people <laughs> probably probably will relate to that. Working with your old man, we rowed too much. Um, I even was a hoddy at one point, got into brick lane as well. But my passion, um, my real passion was always training, fitness, played rugby for a lot for a lot of years. So it was always inevitable that I was gonna come into this industry, I think. Yeah, you was you was you always you've always looked after yourself, haven't you? I remember like when when I was younger, you you were like always looked after, you was always a gym goer, strong. Yeah. Was it rugby? Rugby you were into yeah. as well. I played rugby at a half decent level, got paid a little bit, not yeah. enough to live off, unfortunately. <laughs> so um was working as well. And that was when I did my personal training qualification. I went I actually dislocated my knee um in two thousand and eight playing rugby. Um and I ended up being injured obviously. I couldn't play and I went travelling. Um so I, I was fit enough to go travelling but not fit enough to play rugby. And then when I came back, I already had my mind made up, right, I'm going to do my PT qualification. Uh, and I've never looked back, really. That was in 2000 and early 2009. So I've been in this industry now for 11 years now. Wow. So, so uh, a veteran of the industry now, eh? <laughs> I was, to be honest, I was sort of in the industry before I was qualified. I was, I, I'd studied loads. I knew a lot about the anatomy and I was really interested in it. I was training a few people and a few mates when I wasn't a PT and they asked me to train them. So I took a real interest in it. So I guess you could say I've been sort of in the industry a little bit longer than that. Yeah. And, and the word PT, you know, like I would personally, from my perspective, you're, you're a lot more than 
a PE teacher, you know, like when I worked with you, it must've been about 18 months ago now, maybe even longer. Yeah. Um, you sort of introduced me into the nutrient side of it, the macros and, yeah. and like all of that side of things. So, so I guess you don't pick that up from basic PT training, no. do you? That's no, I'll be to- I'll be totally honest with you to become a personal trainer is very easy. Okay. You, you can, you can do a course online now and pay about five, six hundred pounds and do it all online, which is a bit of a joke. It's a bit of a joke. It makes a bit of a mockery of our industry, if I'm honest. Yeah. It's not really regulated. So you can become a PT on a bit of paper, which doesn't really mean anything. To be successful in this industry, you've got to have passion. You've got yep. to have a real keen interest in helping people. And just that one PT qualification is not really going to take you anywhere. You need to develop on and keep trying to grow yourself. Like learn about nutrition, learn about strength, learn about actually emotional attachments to food and things like that, and actually coaching. So the evolution of a PT, if they're really good and they really want to be successful in this industry, they'll start out as a PT and then they'll progress on and almost become sort of a bit of a life coach as well. Yeah. Now you're helping your clients through for a lot more than just exercise, really. And and like where you work, where you work, your facilities, they're... Yeah they're not the standard gym is it <laughs> do you know what i mean it's it's like um anyone that ever gets the chance it's in bedford and it's it's a it's a it's a lovely facility do you know there's so much going on um do you do you find that that helps you give the clients whoever you're working with sort of more variety in their training and, yeah, and, and things I mean, we're, we're not your typical um sort of treadmills all lined up bikes all lined up we're not that type of gym we've got more uh, functional type of trying i hate saying that word but we've got more functional type training we've got prowlers sleds tires ropes all of the fun stuff that you know most people want to use as opposed to doing just an hour on the treadmill yeah um, like a hamster on the wheel. <laughs> yeah i don't you know i, I... Sorry, it has its use I'm not gonna lie it has its use but a lot of our clients they're not paying us to come in and just stand on a treadmill. We're, we're there to train them, get them strong, get them feeling good, and coming out feeling like they've, or better, coming out, our aim with our coaches is we want our clients to come out feeling better than when they came in. Yeah. One of our main my objectives. So how how did you, obviously this is being recorded in 2020, so yeah. uh, anyone, if watch listening in the future, might not understand what we've just all sort of come through. So your my industry, plumbing, heating, as a generalization, it didn't really get affected because uh, if you've got a leak, you've got a leak. If your boiler breaks, your boiler breaks. You, you know, we, we, yeah. Unless you chose to self-isolate, the, the work was there. So uh, I'm guessing it was the total opposite for you. <laughs> um, you, yeah. you were forced to close. So how... How and what did you do to sort of overcome the challenges of this year? Well, we're still going through them, to be honest. We're not yep. quite back to where we was before all this madness kicked off. But we we ha- we knew it was coming and we knew that gyms were going to be one of the first ones to shut. So we already had everything in motion, ready to go. Switched everything online, which we already had an online element of what we do anyway. We've got our own app, which provides coaching, nutrition, things like that. So we had that in place, so that was fine. We switched all of our in-person sessions to Zoom. We built a membership site. So a lot of our clients are paying us monthly um, prices or uh, monthly DDs. So we had to give that value within what they were paying us because obviously if every if all of our clients cancelled their direct debits, we'd have been out of business. Yeah, so we're, we're lucky in the sense that we've got a very good relationship with our clients as we know them all by person because we haven't got thousands of members. Yeah. We've got less than 100 members that are paying us more money because they're paying us for coaching. And we know them all by first name. So they didn't want to not support us if they couldn't. So there was people that through no fault of their own couldn't continue or we reduced costs down for them. But then there was others that were still working normally. You know, they had they might have been working in tech or had online jobs or in construction. It didn't really affect construction that much. You know, some of my mates have never been busier, you know, because every no one can go on holiday, everyone's spending money on doing home improvements. Definitely. So like anyone who could pay us could carry on paying us, and anyone who couldn't, we we tried our best to make it so no one 
even if they couldn't pay like anywhere near what they normally would, we tried to keep them going in some capacity because we felt it was important because it was no one's fault. So yeah. we wanted to make sure we provided as much value as possible and obviously sort of maintained a level of income so we could pay everyone's wages as well. Yeah. See, I, I, I feel that like businesses like yourself that have sort of like embraced that, that, that level of service are going to come out of this, you know, so much stronger moving forward because not only my, my, my guess would be that the clients that are with you now and were with you through that period are in essence going to be like customers for life, aren't they? They're going to, they're going to have really seen the benefits and the efforts and the, and the, the struggles that you put in to ensure their success was still going forward. Yeah. I like to think so. I really do. I, I, I honestly think they, they saw from us that we genuinely wanted to make sure that all of them kept training because yeah. you know, look, you don't need me to bang on about how important training is for mental health, but, We've seen that during this lockdown, a lot of people are suffering suffering with mental health, and especially in the construction industry. You know, young ma- young males in the construction industry are people that are the most susceptible to mental health issues. If you look at all the data, and like we wanted to make sure because we know how important it is ourselves. Yeah, we wanted to make sure we kept our guys going, regardless of like the income we were getting. And I think that is one of them things that pays you down the line. You know, when when all this is sorted back out and people are back to work and they can afford to get back into training, you know, why would they go anywhere else? Yeah, you know, we genuinely give a shit about. Them. And I that I suppose is is like fundamentally one of the biggest difference of sort of joining a high street chain gym where you are just a number in that in the in yeah. it. Whereas yeah. with someone like yourself, you get in that you get in that attention, aren't you? And and and. They have their place, these type of gyms, because it provides affordable training for people. You know, I'm a member of a a 24-hour gym near my gym. I go there and train just to go come away from the gym. Yes. In pound a month, and it's a brilliant gym. It's probably got like over a million pounds worth of kit in there, you know, and it's smaller independent gyms like us. Obviously, you know, we haven't got that sort of financial uh, back into to spend a million pound on equipment, but you you can't compare those gyms. Yeah, you know, it's like chalk and cheese. It's one gym, you're just a number. You're going in and you're hiring the equipment. Effectively, that's what you do when you're a member of a gym. You you're paying a monthly fee to hire the equipment. When you come and work with us, you are paying for us to get you from A to B and get you results. Make you more feel of good. a journey. It's more of a journey. You know, you're not going to come in and. and pay like more money than what it would cost to be at a normal gym which our costs are you're being coached we're going to take you on a journey like you said get you to a point where you want to be hold you accountable to yourself and make sure that you are accountable to your own goals as well because there's no point keep putting these goals out there and then you're not measuring anything to make sure you hit them that's our job yeah and i want to touch back on what you mentioned about mental health and training yeah. I would, I would literally, you, you've, you've pro- you may have followed my journey, you know, from being yeah. my big fat, unhealthy. I've put a bit of timber back on, unfortunately, but I know what I need to do now, you know, and that, that I've, I've publicly thanked you in the past, haven't I, you know, because you played for a lot of it. It was, you weren't even, you didn't even earn any money out of me. You know, it was just from the content that you put out, uh, the information that you, that you shared and, fundamentally training and getting fit and or or just exercising and just doing something out of the normal of what my days were like back then literally to the point where it probably saved my life in in i I wasn't ever at the point where i was going to like do something to myself but i was getting fatter and fatter unhealthier and unhealthier um i was stressed out to the max and training was was my it, I found it, it, it released, it released that. And, and even now, even now I know that when I've had a bad week or a bad day, I can go down to the gym and just kick shit out of a bag or whatever, whatever it might be, run on the treadmill, lift some weights. And it just, I know that it just releases that pressure from, from my head and, and just zone out. You can't, you know, it's hard to, if you're training, it's hard to focus on anything but the training, isn't it? So, you're in the present. 
Yeah. Because and you, you've just described the majority of our clients. Yeah. Like we have so many clients that I will have a bad day. Or like, for instance, myself at the weekend, I had a few beers, met up with the lads. Obviously, we've got to be owned by 10. So you, you end up drinking a little bit earlier. <laughs> felt a bit ropey still on Monday. Done a session yesterday and I felt great. Felt great afterwards. And I knew all the way there, my little voice in my head was telling me, oh, just sack it off today. Just leave it. Even I get these little voices yeah. telling me, sack it off, leave it. As soon as I did the session, as soon as I was in there, got it done, I felt better. And we have so many clients that suffer with mild anxiety, so common now, and, and even mild depression, that exercise is medicine. I know it sounds cheesy as anything, but because I've seen this so many times over and over and over again, I can say it very confidently. It's not going to get rid of all the day-to-day -day stresses. It's not going to get rid of your business stress, your family stress, any sort of stress you've got going on at home but it will help you manage it as simple yeah. as that. The fitter you are mentally and physically, the, the more equipped you are to handle stress. That's it. And it. The, the key word I picked up there was manage it because yeah. life is life. You know, you're never going to have life where you're just a hundred percent happy, a hundred percent stress-free. That's not, that's not reality, is it? And the key you the key word is managing it. It's it's finding techniques and and routines and structure that allow you to manage that because that is the only solution to it, isn't it? That there is no golden bullet that gets rid of it. There is never a there's never a golden bullet, magic bullet, whatever you want to call it. It's all about taking each day as it comes. When it comes to what we do, it's about finding some consistency. Consistency is the key. Um, we work with a lot of business owners that before they came to us, they would feel, because they're obviously, especially the smaller businesses where they're like doing everything, and they might have yeah. a few guys working for them, they feel guilty to take time out for themselves. And like by time out for yourself, I mean going to, to a gym for an hour or going for a PT session or even going for a walk and stuff like that. But this that's essential for you to be performing at your best physically and mentally. You have to. It, in, it's, it's vital. Me, I'm a business owner. I have all these stresses as well, obviously in a different industry to most of your listeners. But still, you still have to take time out for yourself and look after yourself. It's just so important. It's, it's that uh, the, the, the analogy of putting your own oxygen mask on first. It, it's so true, isn't it? It's you can't be the, the best partner, the best dad, the best business owner if you're not looking after yourself. If, no. if you're not in the, in, in the right frame of mind, feeling good, you know, strong, full of, full of energy, do you know, energy, like you must see it all the time. Do you know, it's everywhere you look, people are just tired. Aren't they? <laughs> they're just, do you know, they're, they're, they're withdrawn, they're fatigued. And, um, and, it, and it sounds stupid, isn't it? To go, go and put an hour's hard work in to improve energy, but you come out more tired, but <laughs> So taking it back to the hang the hangover analogy I spoke about a minute ago. That's not normal to feel like that all the time. I felt like that on Monday. I feel good better today, but that's because I was boozing at the weekend, right? Some people feel like that all the time. They feel knackered, they feel like foggy, they can't focus properly. And like, yeah, at that point when they feel like that, exercise or getting in the gym might feel like the worst or the last thing on their mind that they don't want to do which is where people like us come in because obviously we provide that accountability to make people do what they need to do, basically. Yeah. And yeah. accountability is key for a small business owner, isn't it? Because in essence, yeah. they, they, the majority of them are the, the head of their kingdom, aren't they? They're the king. So they don't have to answer to, to many people as a generalization. So that's where it's difficult because sometimes like some of the guys we train, are like MDs or even chairman of companies that like turn over like 60 million and like they're not used to being told what to do so when they come <laughs> to see us it's a bit of an adjustment for them like obviously we're telling them what to do in regards to them getting fit and healthy but you know you've got to be I think you've got to be a little bit open-minded and don't feel that you're showing weakness by getting a bit of help and that could be with anything like someone helping you make sure you're crunching your numbers properly so you understand your business which I know I used to struggle with that. 
and I'm much better at that now because I've got accountability with it with a business coach. Yeah. Um, or it could be someone like us helping you look after your health and fitness, which is going to have a big impact on you personally, at work, with your family. There's just tons of benefits from it. Yeah. So do you, do you feel that now you've moved quite, you was already doing online stuff, but do you feel that it, that's going to continue to grow? Do you think that's the, like the new normal as the common phrase that everyone's using now? Or do you see, do you hope that you'll sort of get back to having the majority in house where your hands on with them? When you cut off, you cut off for like two seconds there. Oh, sorry. Sorry. My it's half term. So my kids are probably all on the Xboxes and stuff, but um, I'll repeat the question. So um, with the shift that we've all normal. You, you, you want to go back to the normal. Is that way? Do you enjoy it better in person? Uh, well, you need both like, yeah. in, in today's world. You're definitely going to need both. But I'll be honest with you, I don't want any new normal. I want, I want the normal that we've got. And like yeah. the amount of people that are saying, oh, we're going to go, this is going to be the new normal. I, I don't accept that. I think we will go back to normal. I think the media and everything is just creating a bit of a craze at the minute about everything. But yeah. we need we need in-person training like the guys who were with us locally in our gym obviously for them you know they're used to in-person training and all of a sudden we're going online yeah it kept them going during it so we had guys drop like two three stones in lockdown they were doing more sessions than when they was in the gym with us because they were just obviously at home no commuting or anything like that but i think you need both and like we do have that option, we still got people who come in the gym, but we've also got Zoom sessions running. We've got our own membership site um, that is just being updated now, and it's going to have literally everything you need on it. Same as our website. Being, we've got a website up now, but the new one is going to be so much better. It's nearly nearly done. There, there'll be a link to it in the uh, descriptions yeah, of, yeah, of the show, so if anyone wants to check that out, the current website, which is all right. Net, when, when the new one launches in a couple of weeks, it'll be, it, um, that same web, web address will be for that. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. So what, what the, with the, the, the guys, mainly I deal with, a lot, with the majority of men by nature because the industry, it's, it, we're the vast majority. Um, men seem to be very good at making excuses. Do you know, you know my slogan of no excuses and everything that I do, do you know, I'm not perfect, of course. I know, I know that I'm a bit overweight at the moment, but the key is, is not to keep making excuses. What would you say is the biggest, like when you're, you're trying to attract new, new people to, to come and join your programs and get involved yeah. with you, what's the biggest obstacle these, these people are putting up? Time. Yeah. A lot of people will say time. Um, but like if we was to be brutally honest with them we'd say alright how much TV do you watch <laughs> right okay if you're watching 3-4 hours TV a night you've got time I know it's difficult when you've got young kids because sometimes you want to be home to put them to bed and things like that but the flip side of that is like what you come back to earlier if we're going at someone who just feels napping all the time and they don't we hear things all the time like dads don't want to take their kids swimming because they're yeah. ashamed of getting their tops off and things like that, which is sad. If you yeah. miss out on memories with your kids because you know all kids love swimming, don't they? Yeah. Um, on holiday, they'll be conscious about taking their shirt off. They don't feel like they have the energy to play with their kids properly. You know, when you've got like five, six year olds, they're just full of energy, they're just running around. And some of these guys are like in their thirties. That's, you shouldn't be feeling like that in your thirties. And they've yeah. accepted that as the way they feel, uh, as well, if that's the only normal. We've accepted that as their new normal. That's, yeah. like, we don't accept that. As like, I'm a 38 year old guy. I don't feel like that. I haven't got kids yet, but like, I don't want to be a guy who doesn't have energy for their kids. And that's taking it to the to the rawest part of you know where yeah. people come from. Sometimes people feel guilty for taking time out, out of their business. I haven't got time to take an hour out of my business. Well, then you need to look at how you're running the business then and how you're managing it because you're, you, let's say you're operating at 30% capacity with your health and fitness. Where, where would your business be if we can get you up to 75%? Yeah. You know, how much more efficient would you be with your time? And I'm yet to meet any 
business owner, and I'm talking business owner from one man band up to 100 employees that we haven't helped find time to look after themselves. With, with the customers, the clients that I work with in my No Excuses program is time management. It's one of the fundamental like things that we do to the point where it, on my diary, I, I have everything is scheduled. You know, I put the, the most important stuff in first. So like kids, family, gym, you know, whatever it is that's important for me for that week and get them. I, 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 it, it just surprises me how many people, if you ask their first excuse, even with my coaching that I do on a business perspective, is that their first excuse is no time. No time, no time, no time. And I ask a similar question. Well, what's your screen time? What's your, what's your, your screen time this week? Do you know, if it's, if it's anything above four hours on Facebook, do you know, there's four hours that you could have trained once an hour a day. I'm guilty of scrolling and just wasting yeah. time. I can recommend a good book called Getting Things Done. Yeah. You can listen to it on audio book. Who's um, that by? The name, I can't remember. It'll come, come to me in a minute. Getting All right, things, cool. I'll, I'll write that like, down. Come straight up on Audible. And like I use an app called Todoist as well. Yeah. So it's like a scheduling app. So like everything, you can prioritize things into projects. So you can have work, family, or whatever. If you've got and what's that called, sorry? Todoist. Todoist. Cool. To do it. Again, anyone anyone listening, I'll put the um the names of these in the description. So if anyone yeah. wants to go check them out. Good one for me because I, I can be guilty of like sometimes get being a bit scattered with what I'm doing. So it helps you schedule out what you're going to do. And like I put everything in my diary in my coaching, we're all linked up on I, on our iCals and stuff. So we yeah. know what's going on because without that, you know, I'm going to forget. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I need to schedule stuff. Otherwise, One I of, one of the coaches that I have, he's, he's, um, a, he's a business coach and he uses the phrase that you have to put attention on your intentions. So if you, if you can lay out what you want and focus on that, you will find the time for, for them things, do you know, like you, you find the time to go to all the jobs that you book in. So it's a very simple thing. Book in time for yourself because yeah. you, if you, if you've got it written down and you know that you've got to do it, it, it you've got a hell of a lot of a higher chance of it happening if it's yeah. planned in rather than leaving it all just to chance. Uh, and even gym sessions, I, I put them in my diary. So nothing yeah. else comes in. And like, this is what I say to my, some of my guys who have like meetings scheduled and things like that. They book their sessions into their diary. So if they've got a PA or anything like that, or someone who works with them, they know that that's the time they're going to train. You have to, you have to be willing to do that for yourself because it's going to yeah. help you in the long run. And what, one of the objections that, that I found when I first started this was actually from my wife because I've got four children, you know, I run a business. Um, so my excuse at the time was time. It was, I don't have time for this, blah, blah, blah. When I, when I realized the importance of making, making the time, that's the key. I, I, I had to make that commitment to the time. And, and at first my wife was a little bit like, for God's sake, I'm stuck at home. You know, you've been at work all day. Now you're pissing off down the gym. Um, and, and uh, a pro I learned it from a program called wake up warrior. And basically it was, it was, you've got to prove that to, to the people around you that that time is worthwhile. So when I'd get back from the gym, I would make a double conscious effort to like help with the, help with the kids, help with the washing up, you know, to alleviate. So she could see a reward for, yeah. for that. Yeah. And, and also this something we hear quite a lot as well. Like if imagine your wife's been at home with the kids all day, and uh, you know, you've got little kids running around and she's stressed out when you get in and then you go straight to the gym. Obviously, your wife ain't going to be too happy about that. And yeah, there'll still be times now, even though she'll see the benefit, that she might not be. But if you are a much better person to be around, you've got more energy for your kids, you've got more energy for your wife. In a lot of respects, your sex life improves and things like that. That's something uh -huh. we hear all the time if you're healthier. Yeah then I think your wife's going to let it slide if you're going to the gym a few times a week. So like you've got to also what we say to our clients as well is like you've got to tell your wife how you're feeling as well because sometimes they won't truly know that you're feeling like crap, you're not really confident, you don't want to 
take your clothes off in front of her. In some cases, we we hear if she knows that she's going to support you. Yeah, and it, it's commu- communication, isn't it? Yeah, you, okay. how, you, she, they're not people aren't mind readers, so you need to communicate you know, to everyone around you. Generally, I would guess most partners would support. Yeah. Definitely. But I, I feel that a lot, maybe you, again, it's just another excuse that, oh, my wife wouldn't, wouldn't let, I couldn't get, I couldn't do that, you know? And, and yeah. but I want, I'm firsthand experience that it, it can be done, you know? And you, as long as you explain and, and, oh, and fundamentally actions speak louder than words. So it's all well and good saying, oh, me going to the gym will do X, Y, Z for us as a family and everything. You've got to actually deliver. <laughs> you know, if you're pissing off to the gym three times a week, but you're still eating shit all weekend and, and, and not doing anything with the kids, then you're, you're, you're sort of proving them right, aren't you? That, that it's not going to work. So you, you have to show. Everything comes down to action, doesn't it? Yeah, there's got to be a bit of give and take in the relationship as well. You know? If you, yeah. if you go to the gym, then like you said, you've got to step up in other areas as well. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, so with your, you focus a lot around strength, am I right, don't you? With strength yeah, training. So I wouldn't say so much as strength, more like resistance. So like okay. more, like, more like weights-based training rather than pure, you know, like the typical just cardio going on bikes and, and um, treadmills and things like that. Because we focus on fat loss. A lot of people come to us with poor posture. Um, need to lose body body weight or body fat, uh, want to feel good. And our main aims for them is to get the nutrition in check. That's fundamental to getting them where they want to be. Get them stronger and try and get all these postural issues out of the way, like bad backs, achy knees, things like that. And get them just feeling good. Like so they come out of the gym feeling like, you know, you can go and do a bit of gardening yet, yeah, I can lift up that 25 kg bag of sand easy. Or yeah. compost or whatever because a lot of our guys especially in construction by the time they come to us they're sort of off the tools they might have sort of grown their business a little bit and then they've got guys on the tools working for them yeah what what we find is where they was on the tools they were getting away with it you know they're busy all the time active as soon as they come off the tools all the weight starts creeping on and yeah. they're deleting the same and doing the same as when they was on the tools yeah so, like, after a while, they realise actually this ain't working. I need to do something about this. So our aim is just to get them strong, get them looking good. Um, you don't just want them as a bag of bones if they're losing all the fat and have no muscle, especially with men. Yeah. Most men come to us want to look good. Yeah, you know, you know that's why we focus primarily on resistance training. But with conditioning, in, like you've been there and experienced it yourself with the prowlers and the sleds and things like that, that's all part of it as well. And, uh, yeah, yeah, see, I just found that that side of the training, like if I go to the gym now just to lift weights and stuff, for me personally, yeah. I just don't get motivated for it. No. I'll just like, I, I have to be, it has to be more involved for me, which is what I loved about yours, where you, you'd be pulling the sleds, then you'd be yeah. doing the rope, the rope things that kill you and, yeah. and like, all of that side of it. And, and Obviously, I do my did my kickboxing and boxing, so it was like, yeah, I wasn't that traditional like guy that could sit there and bench press for an hour. Oh, I just, yeah, but, but we that's where our job in the sessions is to make it so you like it, so it's enjoyable, not just yeah. having just do a boring weight session. And that's why yeah. we do a lot of semi-private personal training where people will train in groups of four. Okay, with one PT, it makes it more cost-effective for them, and also they bounce off each other in the session. So that's yeah pretty good we do that quite yeah because well. you've got to if you're gonna make that shift in your life you've got a you've got to enjoy the training as well haven't you because yeah. if you if you if you resent it or don't don't like it you're just going to get lazy and stop doing it aren't you yeah although we do have we have clients that love it but we do have clients that without coming to see us they wouldn't go so and that accountability is what drags yeah. them drags yeah. them to hey. it they're paying, obviously, that's their accountability. But then when they start seeing the results, they're like, yeah, I might not be the biggest fan of going to the gym, but I've gone four belt holes in and I yeah. feel great and I feel 10 years younger, so I'm going to keep going. And then after time, they might like it. We do have a lot of guys that initially, it's a chore for them. But that's why we're in business. If everyone loved it, there wouldn't be, 
there wouldn't be any need for us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very true, very true. And um, I, I'd also say I remember like even now, like going somewhere new to train is always a little bit daunting. So like, do you know, like I guess you you've been around that the, the fitness, health and fitness lifestyle like forever. So I suppose maybe you haven't been exposed to it, but like for someone like me, that's maybe not, not in the best shape all the time, going somewhere new is, is, is like very like, shit, I don't know. I don't know whether I want to do it. Like, so, so do you, do you, I, I, I firsthand experience, you were lot were very welcoming, you know, everyone said hello and you know, you were part of the team straight away as soon as I sort of stepped in. But, um, do you find that that's a big battle for people? It, people build up things in their head to be way worse than what they are. We all do that. Yeah. You know, we, tell us, we tell ourselves stories. Oh my God, this is going to be really bad. You get in there and you think, oh, actually, that was all right. That was pretty good. But we have ways of managing that. So like for a new client, we'll be out, out even meet them in the car park, come out, put them at ease, bring them in, welcome them. If, if, if the boys are not in sessions, Everyone will come over and introduce themselves. Uh, we'll give them, if this is their first time, give them a little tour of the gym, sit them down, make them feel comfortable. Um, yeah, it's a very different to like, as we said, like just getting a membership card and then see you later. Yes. Yeah. It's not what we do, really. Do you still do all the tracking? Like, I remember when when I was with you, you like got your little measuring prongs out and stuff and like yeah. you measured measured all the different bits of fat on me. <laughs> yeah. It was, uh... we, we do still do that during what's going on now we can't uh, we can't take the pinches because of touching and stuff oh yeah, yeah i didn't but even think of that yeah the 3d scan that's coming very soon so oh like, okay yeah wow yeah so that's the next evolution of that now so it was it scanned <laughs> your body fat and your muscle and then each time you come in for the measurement it has like an overlay of you so you can see like if someone's coming really big wow it shows them inside it it's really cool oh wow so you got like a Wow, that sounds that, that yeah. sounds awesome. Well, that's that's got to be better than a before and after photo, isn't it? See, yeah. Seeing it like represented we, in a we, 3D. We take the before and after photos, but it's 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 a it's a less invasive way because you'll go in and do it yourself. Yeah, yeah. Oh wow, that's I can't wait to see some of that. Yeah, really good. <laughs> I, I want to touch on. Um, I don't know how much you you know about this and and what what my experiences of, of it is I've got no scientific fact for this, but it's a brown testosterone. So mm-hmm. when I look back at how I was three, I think it was about three and a half years ago, maybe, maybe even four years now where I was at my worst, you know, I, it affected all aspects of my life. Sex life main, like was one of the fundamental parts of it. But the minute I started training and, 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 and getting stronger, I'm, it, I wish I'd measured the testosterone, but I put it down to a lot of the a lot of the benefits come from we as men need testosterone, don't we? Do you know that it's a fundamental chemical in our body. And I read an article that human, like men of today are like a third. The levels are like a third of what they were sixty years ago in men because yeah. of our diets, because of our lifestyle. Do you do? Would you agree with that? Is that something that you I see? Don't the exact numbers, as in if it's a third, but I know that men of our age now, the testosterone levels across the board in average men are lower than they was when our granddads were our age. Yeah, a lot. A lot of that has to do with nutrition, way more stress now. Um, we watch what much more TV. Uh, we don't have as many active jobs now. Like most jobs are not active now. Yeah. There's, there's tons of reasons like the way that we grow our crops um there's a lot of magne- magnesium deficiencies in soil and things like that so a really good magnesium supplement would be a very good supplement for any of your guys to take my next question was actually was about supplements so we'll, we'll jump straight into that yeah. are you a fan of my first question was are you a fan of supplementing requirements and, and if so why where should people start because it's it's a minefield out there for like yeah. unknowledgeable people like myself yes on it no, i would say yes and no if you're someone who doesn't exercise doesn't eat well and don't really look after themselves your supplements might maybe a multivitamin and fish oil might have a bit of benefit but you've got to look at what can you do without taking supplements first so yeah exercise like we spoke about a minute ago resistance training 
helps to maintain testosterone and bone health and things like that. And exercise just, you know, just makes you feel good, right? Yeah. If you're feeling good in your mind, you know, mind body connection and all that, you're going to feel good. Now, there are some su- a few supplements that I would recommend taking. Uh, vitamin D, definitely. Yeah. Uh, don't get enough sunlight in the UK. Uh, and vitamin D has ha- has been shown with recently with what's going on with COVID. People with um, good vitamin D levels very, very rarely are getting sick or dying from vitamin D. A lot of the guys have, obviously they're older anyway, but vitamin D deficiency has been shown in most people that have died with COVID, right? So obviously that's going a little bit morbid, but yeah. it can't hurt you. It's such a cheap supplement. Can't hurt you to take vitamin D, you know? Okay. So that was my next question. Like with, with vitamins and supplements, it's always that, like how much of it should you take? How much like, so a vitamin D supplement, is it something that, you just take every day uh, just because of where we live. Day, and then if you're in, in the summer, if you work outside, you probably don't need to take it. I'll just take right. it in winter. If you yeah. live in Spain or Australia or somewhere like that, you probably could take it min- minimally. But in yeah. the UK, right now, you're not really getting any exposure to the sun. Um, and they used to, I think the recommendations used to be like 4, 400 IUs a day, which they don't really do anything. I think they've knocked the recommendations up now. The government recommendations would be on, I think, about 2,000. I personally take about 4,000 a day. It's yeah. just a 4,000 IU tab a day. Um, you don't need to take any more than that. And you can get vitamin D from really cheap. Like, really yeah. cheap. Like, oh, make sure, so anyone listening then that's i'm gonna yeah. get on uh get on and order some of that definitely straight yeah. away <laughs> vitamin D and magnesium are responsible for many many processes in the body um and magnesium um can have an effect on on your testosterone levels as well yeah yeah natural magnesium cool so i i take a green shake every morning as well um and uh i just again no so i've got no scientific knowledge for it but i just like the the idea of just starting my day with something that's full of full of goodness it just it like it just makes me feel better um and it puts me off having my first coffee for a couple of hours as well because it gives me that that little boost and one of my one of my vices is coffee uh, you, you've probably seen me drinking it it's, it's a black luckily it's a black coffee though so it's not not the worst the worst that one of them all i, I, I love a coffee mate all right yeah <laughs> i just sometimes i wish i just sometimes feel that like i have too many of it so am i starting to get reliant on having four or five cups a day to for the energy do you know yeah the best Asks. way to test that is to cut it out for two weeks see how you feel see if you feel any different yeah i, I cut it out for two weeks and didn't feel any different whatsoever yeah but I, to be fair it doesn't really affect me that much Makes yeah, well, sense. I've always wondered, like, you know, you hear people that say they have a coffee and they're buzzing. Like, yeah. I've never felt that. Like, I drink it because it's, it's hot and warm. And, and <laughs> I think my caffeine sensitivity is, because I've had so much, is a bit lower now. But I guess right, if you yeah. cut it out and add it back in, you'd probably get a little bit more sensitive again. Right, okay. I'll have to do that little yeah. test. Yeah, try it and see how you feel. If you feel any different. Like, there's some people who say they feel like they've got more energy when they cut it out. Yeah, yeah. Do you hear oh, that? Wow. Well? But me personally, I I didn't feel any different, and I love coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I like proper coffee as well. Like yeah. I can't drink, I can't drink instant coffee. I'm, I'm a coffee snob, mate. My so, wife- mate, so I've got like um, my uh, brother-in-law used to work for Costa. So we've got like a grinder. So I've got like a proper professional grinder and I always get different beans from like all over the place. And, and people laugh at me because like I'll go round and they'll be like, do you want a coffee? And I'm like, uh, what is it? Is yeah. it instant? And I'm like, nah, I ain't having it. <laughs> My days are done, mate. Yeah, yes, I can't. I'm glad I've met someone else that is yeah. a coffee snob as well. You know what? The problem is, it, here's the problem with it, right? I, I sometimes I'm out and about because I've got corporate clients dotted all over might work out in the coffee shop for a few hours. I've got Monmouth beans, and I definitely recommend you to get Monmouth beans. They are insane. There's a, there's a I'm famous write that down. Um, borough market in London called Monmouth. And whenever you go there, there's, there's always queues out the door to get coffee. Always. Yeah. You can just walk in and it'll be empty. It's always queuing. We get the beans from there, and every other bean that I try, 
is just never as good. Yeah. Um, I'm still trialing, trialing other bees. I just can't beat one of them. <laughs> yeah. I'd love someone to tell me a bean that can, because if it can, it's going to be insane. But right, I'm going to I'm going to get on. Can you order them online, do you know, or do you have to? Yeah, you can, yeah? My wife orders them all the time. There you go. I'm going to be spending some money on some vitamin D, magnesium, and Monmouth beans. <laughs> the only problem with that is when you go to Starbucks or Costa or anywhere like that, it doesn't taste very good. God, I just yeah. It's more about the environment working in there somewhere different, you know? Yeah, see, I can't, I can't stand like um, Costa. My, strangely, like it, it, McDonald's black coffee is the best yeah, one on on the go that I that I found, and the Wild Bean Cafe as well. That's I quite like. I, better than Costa. Yeah, I see. I'm not a fan of Starbucks or Costa. Really, I just oh, it just doesn't just yeah, it just doesn't. As soon as my eyes were opened up to Monmouth, Costa was just rank. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm, de- I'm going to get them because I'm, I'm running low on the ones I've got at the moment. So uh, definitely on my order list. <laughs> um, so l- around food and stuff, we haven't really touched like diet, like food diets and, and things. Uh, I think I'm pretty sure it was like you that, that, that sort of instilled this in me like, from your videos back, back a few years ago was that like if it's a diet, you're going to like, you, you have to come off the diet. So it has to be more of like a lifestyle. You can't call If you call it a diet, a diet has an end date or a possible change, doesn't it? I hate the word diet. I'm honest. Yeah. A lot, a lot of people in my industry will hate the word diet because the diet, the diet industry is out to make money, right? It's very flawed. Weight watchers, swimming well, all of these things. They're clubs that people sign up to. And if you look at historically, they might help people lose weight initially, but these people, are still going like years later because yeah. they put the weight back in because they haven't found a system or a lifestyle that works for them long term and and it's all about longevity so yeah. like look if you've got a wedding coming up and we have clients who come to us with a limited amount of time to get the best results possible we're going to put them on stuff that's unsustainable right yeah but they understand and we understand it's not sustainable you can only do it for so long yeah. You will fall off the wagon or you will go back to normality because you end up living such a life that is, you're not going to live like this forever, right? So that's fine if you have a limited time to, that you want to get results in. But the real way to live is find something that works for you long term, something that you yeah. can stick to. If you need to lose body fat, which a lot of our guys that come to us do, it's all about the calories that are going in. If you can... Find out where you need to be to get a deficit. Obviously, there's more than one way to get a deficit. It's not just with food. You could be doing more walking. You could be in the gym a little bit more, doing more exercise. All of these strategies will work. Can you explain what, because some people, they might not know what you mean by deficit. So can you just go into a bit more de- detail let's, let's on that? Say, let's say um, for me to maintain my calories so my weight doesn't go up or down, I need to eat 2,500 calories a day, right? Yep. So if I eat that every day, I'll just stay the same. There might be other factors that, like I'm doing more training, I'm doing less training, that will affect it. But we'll take training out of the equation for now, right? Let's say that I want to lose body fat and I go into a 500 calorie deficit, which is quite common for people to do. It's not too aggressive. It's low enough to, to lose weight over time. So I'd eat 2,000 calories a day. So okay. every day I'm in a 500 calorie deficit. Over time, that's going to drop my weight now, right? But obviously what we want to do with our clients, which is why, again, coming back to resistance training, why it's so important, we don't want them dropping muscle. We want them dropping fat. So when you go too aggressive with your calorie deficit, you can drop fat, which is great, but you can also drop muscle. Yeah. And then you end up being weak and, you know, you're getting a look that most men that come to us don't want. They want, to, they want to hold their muscle and lose their fat, which is the win-win. So that's why we don't go too aggressive. We make sure the guys are eating a good amount of protein um, and we get them doing resistance training. Yeah. Make them back that way. So I, I fell into that trap towards the, the, so when I got to my lowest weight, I, I just felt small and felt weak like because I guess I'd I'd probably gone too aggressive. I had I'd started doing heavy fasting, so I was doing 
I'd extended like I was I quite like intermittent fasting from a yeah. just a mind control sort of point of view of like, saying like I'm in control. But when yeah, I went a bit too aggressive. I started doing two three day fasts and and I just dropped a lot of weight, but yeah. I just didn't feel good. I just didn't like it. What what is health? The pro- the problem is where we've got to as a society, and I think it's changing now, is we for decades we've been focused just on scale weight. Yeah. If you're a boxer, scale weight matters. If you're not, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Right? And everyone's so and that's what the, my issue with these slimming clubs, like Weight Watchers and Slimming World, all they do is focus on the scale weight. Doesn't mean anything. Because yeah. like whether you drop a pound or not is not relevant to what else you've done so if deborah goes in and she put a pound on and she's really disappointed and then everyone's like oh he didn't lose anything this week what a shame but she's dropped the dress size because she put a little bit of muscle on and she looks amazing in the bikini who gives a shit about the pound yeah and that's the that's where we've got to get to we don't focus on scale weight. if someone comes in and they need to drop two dress sizes and their aim is to drop a stone and they only drop half a stone, but drop two dress sizes. Guess what? They don't care. Yeah. Do you, do you think that comes from the mindset of a number is a result? So they can see it. Whereas something like your 3D scanner will, from what I gathered from what you said, will sort of give them that give that, them that win, won't it? Because numbers on it, obviously, because it will tell you your weight and your measurements and all that yeah. stuff. But Weight on its own doesn't mean anything. That's yeah. What I'm trying to get. If someone said to me, I, I really want to drop half a stone, and we got them to drop half a stone, but they felt like shit, they couldn't get out of bed in the morning. For a woman, their period started getting um, disrupted. For a man, they weren't waking up with morning wood anymore because they just don't have any energy and they started screwing yeah. with hormones and stuff like that. Is it worth it to drop yeah. half a stone? Or if I said to you, okay, I'll tell you what, we're going to drop half a stone of, of, of fat, but we're going to put half a stone of muscle on. So yeah. your weight will stay the same. You're going to start filling out your shirt on the arms and the chest. Your belly's going to go in. You drop four belt holes and you wake up in the morning feeling good, ready to hit the day, but you drop no weight. Who cares? That's yeah. what we need to get to. Health, how you look in, when you look in the mirror, and how you feel about yourself is the most important measurement of all. The weight doesn't mean anything, unless you're yeah. in combat sport. That's it. Yeah, that's no, it. I, you, you've explained that amazingly. Yeah, it makes perfect sense, doesn't it? To... It does annoy me. And we, that's what we educate our clients on. Forget weight. Yeah. We've had to ban clients from scale because they were using them every day. Yeah. It doesn't mean anything. The weight will do this over time of going down. It fluctuates up and down. So it doesn't mean much. And it gives people them false lows as well, doesn't it? Like if they get on that scale and it and it isn't where they were hoping it is, it's like since yesterday, like, oh my god! If you have a salty dinner where you do a big weight session, you can go up. Yeah, you hold yeah. on to more water. We're most, mostly made up of water. It doesn't mean much. Yeah, no, it, that that makes perfect sense. Good. Right. Well, we're um, if, wrap, wrapping up towards the end of the show. Is there any? Is there anything that? you would like to sort of like let let my listeners know, let them know about how they can get hold of you, what they can do, maybe some practical advice to to move forward from the show with. Um, so I think you're going to drop the website on. on yeah. On yeah. So the website will all be in the links. Yeah. yeah that's I'll, nice. I'll, give, I'll give you an email for them to get me on as well. Yeah. All I would say to them, if they've been thinking about getting into some sort of training for a while, and they're a bit worried about going into a gym, like just a normal sort of gym, really, really consider going to find a local PT. If you're local to us, by all means, get in touch. Even if you're not, obviously, we've got the online side of things that we do as well. We do a lot of online coaching with people from all over the world. But think about going and finding someone to help you because it's the easiest thing in the world for you to keep putting it off. And one thing that, we regularly hear with clients coming in to us is bloody hell, I wish I'd done this years ago. Yeah. We hear it all the time. Like there's no time like the present, but there's never going to be a perfect time also. If it's something that you feel that you need to do and it's important to you, 
my advice to you, without being too preachy, is go and find someone near you who can help. Check out their records. Have a look at their testimonials. If they're any good, they're going to have tons of testimonials out there. A lot of people endorsing them. You might even have a friend that trains with them right now. Go and get in touch with them. And the, and, and the hardest part is getting there. Once you're in, you'll never look back. Yeah. Make a start, isn't it? Get, yeah. get, and put if you're your foot a business in. owner, you owe it to yourself and your business because you're trying to provide a bit of a business. If, if you're like me, and I'm, I'm guessing you are, and like Wayne, you want to, you're providing the future for yourself with this business. And in order for you to provide wealth for yourself, and I guess you want to make money so you can live a nice life later on, you owe it to yourself to look after yourself to be able to do that. Yeah. Because you will, you will have a much better business if you're a healthier person. Uh, yeah, I 100% agree. So, um, yeah, so as, as we've already said, all the links to, to hear more about what Gavin can do and, and his company, GWD Performance, will be in the links and everything. Um, I think that's a wrap. I think, I think yeah. we're done. So thanks yeah. for listening, everyone. One other thing I forgot to say, oh, I should yeah. have said this, is also most of the business owners we work with, they run all the costs through their business. Okay. You can check that with your accountant. It's totally fine to do. As corporate wellness or corporate services, we do it with tons of business owners and tons of actual companies that we go in and train as well. Wow. Okay. Well, that's that's handy to know because any cost-effective <laughs> uh, solutions are, are, are welcome to everyone, aren't they? So, why we run? You, you've got to have perks of running a business as well, which all of us, I guess, want and know about. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. For, for your time um i know you're a busy man and you've got plenty on so i really do appreciate it um and hopefully we'll hear from you further down the line on another episode one day happy to come back on i enjoyed that really lovely good. excellent yeah. lead hero is the uk's number one marketing automation platform for ambitious trades businesses looking to save time make more money and level up because just getting leads is not enough anymore. Lead Hero will help you triple your sales and maximize profits with our job flow acceleration system. Visit leadhero.ai to learn more. I really hope you enjoyed the show. Um, I just wanted to pull it out there for anyone listening that I offer business coaching but also life coaching. My life is centered around something called the three Bs, which stands for body, business, and balance. When you work with me as a coach, we tackle all three aspects of life. So you as an individual, body, mindset, health, fitness, knowledge, education, Business B obviously stands for your business, improving, maximizing opportunities, elevating, making more money. And balance stands for your for friends, family, loved ones, you know, making time for everything in your life. And the free Bs is the core element to that. If you'd like to learn more, I would ask you to reach out to me on uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, wherever you might be consuming my information. Um, or you can email me directly at wayne at offthetools.co.uk. I'm here waiting to assist you to elevate across all aspects of life. Have a good one. No excuses. Let's go.